Senator Fudinan. Thank you, Madam President. I first want to thank all of the frontline workers, our police, and other strong and diligent St. Lucians who have put themselves out there to help us combat this dreaded COVID-19 pandemic. I also want to join my colleagues this morning in extending condolences to our many friends and families who have loved ones who have perished and have suffered in other ways in the diaspora since the COVID-19 pandemic started. Madam President, this morning I sat and I reflected on my last, the last time I spoke in this Honorable House, two sittings ago, and I remember attempting to do what I am going to do today. I remember that I had to be redirected by yourself to the motion on the, on the table, which was, um, it had to do with borrowing some money. But what I was trying to do, I am happy that today I had a second, I have a second bite at the cherry, so I am able to do so because it is exactly what we are here to do. And I was trying to signal to us that although we were discussing a different bill, it was a health-related bill, but we should have been preparing ourselves for what we are confronted with today. It was right at our doorsteps, and I was just trying to give a signal that maybe we should be in preparation mode and try to avert some of the damage that could be done. So, Madam President, the good Lord gave me a second chance, so I'm going to make use of it this morning. As we come here to seek to extend the state of emergency, I don't believe any right-thinking St. Lucian will think that, or will, should believe, that the government or anyone who is attempting to take any action to avert or to control the spread of this kind of disease is doing the wrong thing. I believe that any action that the government is going to take and the people of St. Lucia are going to take to control or to mitigate against the effects of this should be commended. But as we do so, we need to be properly guided, we need to be careful, and we need to ensure that we don't do more harm than good. So as we do so, Madam President, I just want to ask that we reflect on a few things. As a people, as a government, as a Senate, we need to reflect on a few things. We need to reflect on what, how we've been able to manage since the, the first uh, state of emergency was, was approved. How have we managed? What are the difficulties we've encountered? What are the challenges that we are likely to encounter now that we are coming to extend the, the state of emergency? Madam President, we need to take into, into, into um, consideration what we have been able to achieve because as a country, we are trying to combat this and there are certain achievements that we have not even noted. And perhaps for future crises, for future situations, we need to be able to document and take note of these things so that we can repeat them and of course to avoid the mistakes that we would have made. Madam President, one of those things is cost. We need to look at what we've spent on this, on this, um, on this effort and how we can mitigate against perhaps future situations like that with more, more, more uh, creative methods. Madam President, we have had since the last uh, few weeks to have virtual school. We've had to have our students at home. Let us reflect on how well this is working. We have had to make quite a few adjustments in our social behavior. Have we taken time as a, as a people, as a country, as a government, to reflect on how well this is working and what we can do this time around as we come to extend so that we can improve on the last, maybe the last month? Madam President, we have to ask ourselves the big question. Are we doing everything we can and are we doing it properly? 
Or is there room for us to reconsider some of the decisions we've made and some of the, the ways in which we are handling this? We also want to take into consideration, Madam President, to what extent are we taking care of the frontline workers that we are all saying thank you to? The nurses, our health care providers, the police, the NEMO representatives, all those people, our St. Lucians, who are putting themselves out there when we have to remain in our homes, they have to go out there and work. They have to go there and look after us. Now, I know we've been saying thank you to them, and I did that as, as well, but I believe sometimes we have to put our money where our mouth is. We have to show that we really are supporting them. What are the incentives that we can provide for these frontline workers so that they can be motivated, Madam President, as we go into this extended state of emergency, to continue to give the quality of service that this country needs at this time? We are heavily reliant on their services, on their expertise. And it is not enough to just keep telling them thank you. It is nice. But let us, what are we doing to continue to motivate them? And my colleague before mentioned the telephone. We have declared uh, that we made some, some good money. Are we going to use some of the res these resources to reward them? So that they can feel that, you know, my efforts are being appreciated. I think too much of the focus, Madam President, in the last few weeks since COVID-19 is about politicians, about us, who is doing what well and who is not doing what well. I think the focus should be on channeling our resources and our efforts towards backing up our frontline workers, backing up our professionals and the people in St. Lucia who are putting their lives on the line, who are putting their families at risk by going out and coming back to their houses to protect us. That is where our focus needs to be. And we have a habit as members of this house, both lower and upper, whenever there is an issue to focus too much on us, we need to focus on the people who matter. And at this time, we have a pandemic, it, it's affecting all of us. Let us direct our energies and our attention to the people who are doing the work. And let us as well start doing some more work. Madam President, I wanted to also express uh, a concern that I have raised before in a different context. But perhaps it has gone, you know, on fallen on, on, on death ears. But today I hope we can reflect on it. I remember some time ago, we welcomed about 100 plus uh, medical healthcare professionals from Cuba. And that's an example that we need to learn from. As we try to deal with this pandemic, as a country, we need to reflect on our human resource capacity. We as a small state must be able to have a better human resource base that is going to help us to be more resilient in situations like this. And it's not only for COVID-19. Any time we're going to have a crisis, if our human resource capacity is good, we have a better chance of surviving. So we need to invest in that. We have to start from the schools up, but we have to do a little more, Madam President. Because while Cuba couldn't give us money, they could have given us human beings, real people who feel, who understand, who can smile and take care of our people. That is what we need to do. Sometimes we come to this house as, as, a, as a parliament and all we talk about is how much we spent on that, how many buildings we built. You know, Madam President, in a situation like that, COVID-19 has been one of the best teachers. It has made us reflect on the things that are real, not the things we just like to talk about. We have realized that big, small, rich, poor, everybody is a victim or can be a victim. And that is why, as a country, we must invest and this, as we reflect on this, we have to continue to invest in the things that can help us stand up in a situation like now. So, Madam President, that takes me to the final point that I'm going to make on this matter. We were so very thankful for Cuba, who is a, is a, is a sister country in the Caribbean, who was able to extend the helping hand. That should teach us a lesson in how we align ourselves 
with foreign, you know, foreign policy decision making. We must be very careful. And St. Lucia now should take this moment of being in a state of emergency, being vulnerable where countries in the region like Cuba, Venezuela are, are willing to extend a helping hand. And we must reflect on our relationship, the kinds of alliances that we are forming with other countries that are undermining these very same countries. This is a time for us to reflect on it. And I have said it before, Madam President. Foreign policy has a lot to do with how a country manages itself. So at this time, I am very happy that we have done so. But we need to make sure that going forward, we revisit these kinds of alliances. Because some of these countries have not done a thing for us, Madam President. They haven't given us one swab, one um, testing kit, nothing. But we want to go and align ourselves with them. And now we are in a crisis. Look at which countries have tried to extend a helping hand to us and other Caribbean leaders, um, Caribbean sisters and brothers. So this is an opportunity for us to reflect. One, on the way we approach the extension of the, of the state of emergency reflect on what we have done well, what we have not done properly, with a view to improving. Secondly, Madam President, we must show a commitment to, to appreciate and motivate our frontline workers. They are still out there. On my way up this morning, the police is already at the checkpoints. Some of them don't go, to, go home late at nights. What are we doing for them? And thirdly, we must revisit our foreign policy decisions so that in times you know you know you know there's an old saying madam president you know your true friends when you're in trouble when things are bad that's where you know who your friends are when things are nice everybody's your friend the day things go wrong the day you have a crisis all the fake friends disappear and the real friends come to your aid and that is a lesson we need to learn as a saint lucia as a little saint lucia in caricom so madam president i just wanted this morning to add my voice by saying that the extension of the state of emergency, we have argued for and against it, but we believe that whatever the government is doing to combat the COVID-19 situation must be backed up by real action. And I think if St. Lucians see that there is a commitment to support the move, they will cooperate. They will stay home. If they feel that all of us are doing what we say that they should do, and we are backing it up with action, with resources, they will, they, will, they will stay home. They will cooperate. And we can keep the number of infected cases to zero. And we can come out of this saying that we had, not, we had lost no St. Lucia on our island because we did it right. Not because we came to Parliament and, and abused each other. But because we made decisions that backed up the, the things that we said. So, Madam President, I'm hoping that this is what happens from today. And that by the time May 31st is it, when we get to that point, we would have looked back and said that we did it right as a government, as a people, as an opposition, and that St. Lucians would have been proud of the effort that we have made. Thank you, Madam President.